today we're going to take a deeper look at our reading comprehension. We're going to begin with our fact and opinion. In The Dog That Dug for Dinosaurs, you read facts about real events. A fact is something that can be proved to be true. An opinion is what someone believes or feels. As we reread, look for reasons that support facts and opinions. For example, the author writes that Mary Anning became famous. She supports that by writing that Mary's picture is in a museum. We can use a chart like this one to list facts and opinions that the author gives to support this. Let's take a look at some more information on facts and opinions. A fact is a statement that can be proven to be true or false versus an opinion is a personal belief or feeling. An opinion can't be proven. Authors include facts and opinions in their writing to help influence the reader. Fact, Thanksgiving is in the month of November. Ask yourself, can this be proven? Opinion, Thanksgiving is the best holiday. Ask yourself, could people disagree? When we're looking for statements that are facts or opinions, there are some key words that help us know whether it's a fact or an opinion. If we look at something that is historical, dealing with history, that would be a fact. Dates go right along with that. When they are giving us a date, even if you don't know for sure if that's the correct date, that's going to be a fact because I can look it up and prove whether it's true or false. It is a fact. When we see words like most, we know that it's an opinion. We also see the word might that is also an opinion. When I see the word, it is certain, that's almost like saying it is a fact. Worst, that word worst is an opinion because I can say, can someone disagree with that and not think it's the worst? The word believes, if you believe, then it is your opinion. I believe this is the worst. I believe this is the best. This proves. If we are giving proof, we are giving facts. So friends, when we see some of these key words, we can know if it's a fact or an opinion. So let's try to come up with some opinions. So we're going to write an opinion using the topic given. Our first topic is cats. I'm going to type my opinion. I think cats are the best pet. Now, I think and the word best are also key words to show that this is an opinion. Let's try one for hamburgers. Hamburgers are my favorite food. Now, that might seem like a fact because it's my favorite food, but can I look that up anywhere? and find out if hamburgers are my favorite food? No, we cannot. So that is just my opinion because it's stating what my favorite food is. School. I miss school. Although we are all feeling this way, it is still just an opinion because we can ask ourselves once again, could somebody possibly disagree? Teacher. 
I love my teacher. Love is an opinion word because it's a feeling word. So that makes this an opinion. Ooh, chocolate. You know my feelings on chocolate. Chocolate is so yummy. Once again, this is an opinion because these are just my feelings. Now, let's try the same thing with making a fact. We're going to write a fact using the topic given. Now, this can be tricky if you don't know a lot about a topic, but we can also make it super simple. Cats, what is something that I know to be true about cats? Well, I know cats are animals. So I'm simply going to write cats are animals, period. I can look that up to see if that is true or not true. Cats are animals. It's something I can find out to be proven. Hamburgers. Hamburgers are made of beef, period. Hamburgers are made of beef. I can look that up and prove if that is true or not. School. All students must attend school until at least the age of 16. Notice, I have an age in here, 16. This is another clue that you may have a fact if there is a number in there. Now, all students must attend school until at least the age of 16. Now, whether this is true or false, this is a fact because it can be proven. Teacher. A teacher must go to college to get a degree in order to teach. This is a piece of information that I can look up. I could look up, how do you become a teacher? Well, I will find that I need to go to college to get a degree in order to teach. Chocolate. Germany is well known for making chocolate. Now, this is a fact that I can also look up. Look up. Germany is a country. So I'm giving you a social studies history type fact here. Germany is well known for making chocolate. I can look that up and find out and prove if that is true or not. These are all facts. Before that, we made up opinions. Note our key words with opinions, whether we disagree or agree, that still is an opinion. Facts are things we can prove to be true or not. As you are rereading today, you will look through our story and try to think about whether facts are being given or if it's an opinion. Use the same technique that we used here today. Today, we're also going to dive deeper into author's purpose. As we reviewed before, we can ask ourselves, why did the author write the story? We can think about the word PI as an acronym. The P stands for persuade, the I stands for inform, and the E stands for entertain. And we can ask ourselves, which of these reasons is why the author wrote the story? The reason why an author writes something is called the author's purpose. The author's purpose may be to give information or to make a reader laugh. The purpose may also be to make a reader believe something or to answer a question. Think about why the author wrote The Dog That Dug for Dinosaurs. Let's review our different purposes. The author's purpose persuade. The author tries to convince 
the reader to do something or to agree with him or her. Here's a great example. My grandma should win Orange County's best pie contest. Her pie is the best in the world. She makes it from scratch with fresh cherries. Everyone who gets a taste of grandma's cherry pie agrees that there's nothing else on earth like it. She has entered this contest for the past 10 years, but has never yet won. My grandma is most deserving of the award this year, and I know she would be most honored with it. Now, we can look at this and ask, are there things in here that someone is trying to get us to believe? Well, I see that in the topic sentence, my grandma should win Orange County's best pie contest. Then the details throughout support why she should win. So the writer is trying to get us to agree that his grandma is the best and most deserving to award this, to be awarded this prize this year. So that is why this author's purpose is to persuade. Our next author's purpose is to inform. The author gives true factual information about a topic. Here's an example. The first pies made in the 12th century were quite different than the pies we eat today. Those early pies appeared in England and were made mainly of crust with a meat filling. In fact, the pies often contained fowl and the bird's legs were left intact to hang over the sides of the dish to be used as handles. Fruit pies are believed to have been created 400 years later in the 16th century. So friends, this paragraph gives us a lot of facts and we know they are facts because I can look them up to prove if they are true. It gives us some historical information. It uses dates. All of these help me know that the author's purpose is to inform. Our final, auth final author's purpose is to entertain. That is when the author writes something for a reader's enjoyment. Let's take a look at our example. Juliet and Jeff dropped their backpacks by the door. Like always, the twins were ready for a snack after the long day at school. They spotted the last piece of pumpkin pie at the same time. They made a mad dash for it, crashing into each other and the counter. Jeff snatched the glass dish up first, but didn't have a good grasp on it when Juliet made a swipe for it. Splat! Juliet, look what you did, Jeff cried. Now, I know that this is to entertain because it's telling a story. We can look and think of our characters, the setting, and events that happened in the plot, the problem, the solution. When we can do those things, we know the author's purpose is to entertain. Now, let's give this a try. Let's read this card and you tell me what the author's purpose is. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess named Charlotte. She lived in a beautiful castle with her father and mother. Charlotte was the most beautiful girl in the kingdom. What was this author's purpose? If you said to entertain, you were correct. Card two, frogs are amphibians. They can live on either land or in water. A frog can lay thousands of eggs called frog spawn. What is the author's purpose? If you said to inform, you were correct. This gives us facts. We can look up. Are frogs amphibians? Yes, they are. It also gives us numbers, thousands of eggs called spawn. spawn. These are facts that can be proven. Card three. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and whipped them all soundly and put them to bed. 
What is this author's purpose? Well, this nursery rhyme is meant to entertain. This is an old, old nursery rhyme. Many nursery rhymes that you have heard you can also say are just to entertain. Our final card. You should eat ice cream because it is so good. You can choose from many flavors. You can eat it in a bowl or in a delicious cone. What is this author's purpose? The author's purpose here for card four was to persuade. When it starts off by stating that opinion, ice cream because it is so good, then it goes on to give reasons why that is our persuasion writing like we did in class about whether we should have homework or not. Now, each of these cards were examples of pie, our author's purpose. Today, as we read The Dog That Dug for Dinosaurs, I want you to be thinking about your author's purpose.